Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and I just uh, want to visit with you today and uh, share with you a little bit about uh, living out our faith. I begin with one of my favorite stories, um, kind of a story in the negative of what we should not do, but it goes something like this. A man's walking along a narrow path, not paying much attention to where he's going, when suddenly he slips and he falls over the edge of a cliff. As he fell, he grabbed a branch growing from the side of the cliff. Realizing that he couldn't hang on for long, he called out for help. Is anybody up there? Yes, I'm here. Who's that? The Lord. Lord, help me. Do you trust me? I trust you completely, Lord. Go ahead. Let go of the branch. What? I said, let go of the branch. Is anybody else up there? Well, this man didn't quite understand what it means to trust in the Lord, but in Sunday's sermon, it's all about faith and trusting in God. And it's a time uh, that we see Elijah, the prophet, appearing on the scene. And Elijah has just pronounced that a great drought is going to descend upon the land. And what's really interesting is God promises to take care of Elijah. Well, not, that sounds like something God would do. But it's, it's how God promises he's going to take care of Elijah. He tells him that, well, I'm going to send you to the wadi and I, I'm going to tell you, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to feed you by sending ravens to you in the morning and the evening to feed you. I don't know about you, but that's not the typical way that I would think of God taking care of me and making sure that I had something to eat. I'd call that a leap of faith, but Elijah trusts God and God does just as he says. Now, when the wadi dries up, uh, Elijah knows he needs to move on. And so God sends Elijah to a poor widow and her son. And he says, and she'll take care of you. As he arrives on the scene, um, he finds that the widow is now literally to her last bit of meal and oil. And then God makes this interesting promise. He promises the widow that if she will feed Elijah, that what she has will not run out until the drought is over. And she trusts the word of God. She feeds Elijah. And if she's able to feed Elijah herself and her son, for the duration of the drought. My friends, you can read this a wonderful, it's a, it's a great read. Uh, this story can be found in 1 Kings 17. It's an intriguing story of faith for Elijah and the widow. I share this story because they both remind us of some of the keys about living out our faith. You know, my friends, like Elijah in the drought, the widow down to her last meal you and I are all going to face circumstances in our lives where we're going to have to step out in faith and let God do the rest. Elijah and the widow really didn't see how this could all end out well, but they decided, they made a choice to put themselves in God's hands. And sometimes, you know, when we really pray from our heart of hearts, we praying knowing that God's got this, but we're not sure how it's going to work out because the solution hasn't been yet revealed to us. But in those circumstances, we pray to God and we know he's going to take care of it. My friends, there can be no doubt that when we step out in faith, it is also a time that we put our full trust in God. And in my opening story, that was something the man wasn't willing to do. But we need to trust God like a child trusts their parents. Have you ever seen a child that's just thrown into the air and, and they giggle and smile and, and they have the ability to speak? They say, again, again. They're so excited. They so enjoy uh, that, that fun field activity. Why? Because they know nothing bad is going to happen. Well, you know, when you see that example being played out, we need to have that same kind of trust uh, with God knowing that he will protect, provide, and be with us through whatever circumstances we're facing. We have to step out in faith 
and trust ourselves to God the same way a child trusts his parents. And finally, my friends, I want to be honest here. Sometimes it's going to make us anxious as we step out in faith, as we put our full trust in God. It's like this. Let's say that you've been praying about a new job. You really feel like God has answered that prayer. You're ready to step out in faith. You have trusted that God has opened this door, and that's been confirmed in a couple of different ways for you. But now it's time for you to give your notice uh, at your present job. It, it's time to set up the moving van and, and, and start your new job. Now there are all kinds of questions that's running through your mind. And, and we get that. But here are what I want to remind you. Even though in that moment we might feel anxious, uncomfortable, even a little bit nervous, we also want to remind ourselves that God is going to go with us that he's already clearing a way for us and he's standing ready to bless us. Faith calls us to work through those feelings, to pray more, to talk to trusted friends and work through those feelings and to know that God will be with us every step of the way. Oh, in our campaign, we're nearing a commitment Sunday on April 10th for our Hope for the Future Capital campaign. We have grounded our journey in gratitude and acknowledged all of God's blessings. We have prayed and asked God, Lord, what do you want to do through me? We acknowledge that our gift will be revealed to us in prayer. We've also, I believe, found that our lives are being renewed and our faith is being renewed as we've been praying and seeking God's will for our lives each and every day. But on on April 10th, it's going to be our turn to step out in faith, to, to place our trust that as God leads us and shows us uh, what we need to do, that we're also, as we step out in faith, trusting that God will provide all that we need to do. And my friends, maybe you're not from this church as you're listening to this devotion, but you know what? This devotion applies not just to this campaign, but this last paragraph applies to life in general. My friends, you know, when you remind yourself of how God has blessed you, you're reminding yourself how God has been faithful to you in the past. You're seeing that as you pray, God is answering those prayers and he's done it time and time again. And you know what, my friends, as we pray to God, as we ask, Lord, what do you want to do through me? Lord, what, what should I do today? We are seeking divine guidance, and that's always the way to go, rather than relying on our own insights. And ultimately, as we step, in, step out in faith, following God's lead, trusting in him, we know that he goes with us, and that he will take care of us and provide for us. And my friends, I think these steps will help all of us navigate our way through life and meet any challenges along the way. I hope this has been uh, helpful to you and uh, say I thank you for letting me share this brief devotional with you. I have a couple of things that I want to share with you today uh, in the life of our church and things that apply to the community. Um, if you uh, took uh, Easter eggs to be filled, uh, please remember to bring them back uh, to uh, the church uh, th by this Sunday, April 3rd, uh, and uh, there's a box in the lobby uh, to collect those filled Easter eggs. Um, we're having a community egg painting party uh, that's going to be held on Thursday, April 7th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And then our community Easter egg hunt is Saturday, April 9th, uh, starting at 10 o'clock for children up to the ages of 12 years old. There's going to be prizes, snacks, and a puppet show uh, highlight this year's event. Also available for sale are hot dogs, soup, and baked goods. Doesn't seem possible, but Holy Week begins next Sunday, and there are several special services uh, being planned. Holy Thursday service will be at 7 p.m., and we'll be including uh, Holy Communion. Our Good Friday service will also be at 7 p.m., a unique funeral service honoring the life and ministry of Jesus. Our Easter sunrise service will begin at 6.30 a.m. and will be held on the lower parking lot. And immediately following the service, we will have uh, an Easter breakfast. Finally, uh, we will be delivering medical supplies for the Ukraine again to Mission Central on April 25th. We are collecting the following items uh, for them. Wound care items, 
small first aid kits, band-aids, gauze rolls and pads, non-adhesive dressings and alcohol swabs and pads. And again, uh, we will collect those uh, and then deliver them on April 25th. Well, let me close this time together uh, with you uh, with a word of prayer. Will you pray with me? Loving God, help us today and always to fully rely on you. Even when it's hard and the way isn't totally clear, we can be sure that you are with us. Help us to step out in faith. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for visiting with me today. We'll talk again soon. And may the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe.